all around us, the trustworthiness of the Bible is being attacked in best-selling novels, movies, the media, and academia. But such assaults are nothing new. Over the centuries, no book has been more criticized, reviled, and attacked from every direction. And yet God's Word has remained standing for 2,000 years. The reality is the Bible has been attacked more than any other book. It has stood the test of time and has demonstrated that it is historically reliable and it is also a very important foundation for our faith. Critics of the Bible have frequently raised several objections about its trustworthiness. One of the most common objections is that we can't know what was originally in the Bible because all we have are copies of copies of copies of the originals. According to this argument, the biblical manuscripts have been corrupted through frequent transmission like in a game of telephone. Dr. Sam Lamerson of Knox Theological Seminary, along with many other biblical scholars, says the evidence contradicts that notion. If we can't trust that the New Testament we have today was actually the one that was written 2,000 years ago, then we certainly cannot trust any other ancient historical document because we have in the New Testament, thousands of copies, and some of them dating back to 200 A.D. We also do not have any, any even inkling of that number of copies to any other ancient historical document. In fact, the oldest copies we have in existence for the original biblical documents date far closer to the time of the original manuscripts than do any other works of antiquity. For instance, Caesar's Gallic Wars was written about 60 B.C., yet the oldest manuscript copy we have is from about 900 A.D., a span of nearly 1,000 years. Plato's Tetralogies was written about 400 B.C., but the earliest known manuscript copy is from around 900 A.D., a span of 1,300 years. In contrast, while the New Testament was written in the first century A.D., the earliest known manuscript we have that contains most of the New Testament dates to only 300 A.D., a span of only 200 years. There are also existing fragments that date back as far as 125 A.D., a span of only 25 years. The New Testament documents are very reliable. We have better manuscript evidence for the New Testament than for any other ancient book. Dr. N.T. Wright is one of the most respected New Testament scholars in the world. Most of the great classical works like Virgil and Caesar and Tacitus and so on and Homer, we have one or two or three medieval manuscripts which are our only current sources for those great classical works. The New Testament is simply on a different scale entirely in terms of the depth and range of the manuscript evidence. The evidence for the accuracy of the Old Testament manuscripts is also extremely strong, thanks to the discovery of the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran in 1947, which forever put to rest the notion that massive changes had crept into the biblical documents over time. Up until that time, the first documents we had for the Old Testament were about 1000 A.D. Now the Dead Sea Scrolls are about 100 B.C., uh, so you have about a thousand year uh, gap now. And so now you can compare something that was about 100 B.C. to something that was about 900 to 1000 A.D. You can see over a thousand years did they make mistakes copying. What we found, interestingly enough, is that they did not. It shows the accurate transmission of the Old Testament. Some have also attacked the scriptures on historical grounds, saying the places and events depicted in the Bible are not real. Here again, modern investigation has undermined the skeptics. There has been no sustained attack on the New Testament that has proven that any of the documents are unreliable. And there have been lots and lots of attacks, but none of them has been successful. What has happened many times is as scholars have looked at historical events more carefully, they've come to realize that the New Testament does indeed uh, represent historically accurate view of what happened. One of the great strengths of the Bible is as we find out more about archaeology, we find that the Bible has integrity. Kirby Anderson, a frequent lecturer on college campuses around the country, is host of the nationally syndicated radio program, Point of View. 
the Bible makes specific statements about ancient tribes, ancient civilizations. For centuries sometimes we did not find those civilizations and many people actually pointed to that as a problem with the Bible. It was as early as 1901 that the American Association for Archaeology said that the Bible must be an error because it talks about the Hittite nation and yet it was only five years later in 1906 in a town just a little bit uh, to the east of Ankara, Turkey that we actually found the Hittite nation. So time and time again the Bible makes historical statements and archaeology has been able to prove them. Archaeology sheds a flood of light on the New Testament, and the more that light shines on the New Test Testament, the more we say, um, yeah, this makes sense, this fits in its historical context. But what about the human authors of the Bible? Even if we have accurate manuscripts and confirmation of historical context, can we be sure that they communicated the truth to us concerning the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? One of the interesting things that we find in the Gospels are what we call truth by the criterion of embarrassment. That is that the, the author should have been embarrassed to write these things down. And things like that are the disciples run away from the crucifixion of Jesus because they're afraid. If you're writing a story to try to start a church, the last thing in the world you want to do is portray its leaders as a bunch of cowards who ran away. And yet that's the way that they're portrayed. The first people who come and see the risen Jesus are not the disciples. That's because they're cowards. The first person who comes and sees the risen Jesus is a woman. And that's interesting. Interesting because of the chauvinism that we find in other documents at the time. And interesting because it was very, very rare for a woman to be able to give testimony in a court of law. If you want to set up a document, if you want to make up a document that will prove your case, the last thing that you want to do is have a woman be the person who discovers Jesus alive. And yet that's the way that we find it in the New Testament. Why is that? It's because those are the events that actually happened. Because of the Bible's amazing accuracy and reliability, Christian scholars believe it provides a firm historical foundation for our faith. You have very direct and accurate statements being made in the Old and New Testament, which now we can verify scientifically. It makes very trustworthy statements about historical statements and places and people, which we can now verify through archaeology and historical research. So at every single point, this is a document that establishes the fact that it is trustworthy. It is trustworthy scientifically, it is trustworthy historically, but most importantly, it is trustworthy for our faith. Thank you.